March 16th is when he ordered the closure of all Wisconsin uh, public schools. And he said in a quote um, in this article from, um, oh, what is the source here? Um, anyways, he said, um, this is a quote from Evers, closing our schools is not a decision I made lightly, but keeping our kids, our educators, our families, and our community safe is a top priority as we continue our work to, to respond to and prevent further spread of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. And my source for that one was, um, I'm so sorry here. Um, I don't, oh, Wisconsin State Journal, sorry. Wisconsin State Journal was my source. I'm done talking now, I've talked too much, sorry. Okay, um, so um, <clears throat> to talk about what I believe, Ben, I believe what you talked about. Um, Evers, when he did this, um, what the date that he did it, three days prior to that, he said that he was not going to do this. The biggest argument that I have heard from people, <clears throat> um, uh, business people, especially up here in northern Wisconsin, north central Wisconsin, has been that there was not enough time <clears throat> allotted for them to, um, you know, because it, one of the things that it did allow, <clears throat> excuse me, was... Um, it did allow for a lot of businesses to go down the road of, uh, especially the the uh, uh, service type industry, to go down the road of uh, take out, carry, you know, carry out that type of thing. Well, a lot of these small restaurants did not have that capability. They did not have the supplies to do this. The three days was, you know, I, I think you said it was three days. They or two days. He did it. Get it. What day did he say it? Did he? Um, issue the safer at home. He, he issued the safer at home on. May 23rd and it took effect on May 25th or March, right. March, not May, March. Um, yeah, March, March, right, right. Oh, so, okay. um, yeah, no, um, but the, uh, so that it just did not give these business owners enough time. Uh, it also did not give parents enough time to adjust to this. Um, I, I, I have friends who actually initially, because they're like, oh crap, what do we do with our children? I, you know, it, because you said they're out of school the week before that, the month before that, or yeah, no, two weeks before that, right? The 16th. Issued, uh, he issued the close, the closure of all schools, March 16th. And that, right. the last day they could have school was March 18th, which I believe was a Friday. If I remember. Yeah. So a lot of those people, they did not know what to do. Uh, and there, many of them have not recovered from that overall situation. So one of the sources that I actually have uh, is from United Nations uh, Education. Um, oh boy, oh boy, Edu Education Science uh, and Cultural Organization, um, and they actually. I'm going to go into the school uh, closure issue here and. Um, worldwide, obviously, this is worldwide. Uh, we're, we're we're talking about there's several different things that um, they're concerned with. Uh, interrupted learning, uh, they, they they it definitely impacts uh, their learning. Uh, the, you know the. Uh, children learning. Poor nutrition. Many of these kids depend on the meals that they get. They can't do that. Uh, confusion uh, and stress for the teachers. Many teachers weren't prepared for this. Again, parents unprepared for distance and homeschooling. They, you know, how are you supposed to do this when you have got a kindergarten kid that, you know, um, it doesn't do very well uh, uh, looking at an iPad. In fact, I just spoke to a lady uh, Friday and she said that finally her children, uh, they, the, Green, the Green Bay Public Schools, they're now allowing them to come back to school because it has proved to be um, such a, I don't want to call it a disaster, but um, it, it not good, not good for many of these kids. Uh, they, they don't do well. Those that have, uh, uh, they, they can't sit and look at an iPad for a, a long period of time. Um, uh, it challenges, um, uh, uh, gaps in childcare, uh, high economic, uh, not economic cost because the parents, a lot of the parents have to be home. So there's so many, many different factors that, um, our, our, uh, isolation is a, is a huge one that, um, I read an article, uh, earlier today, um, from Boston where a 16 year old committed suicide because he could not handle the isolation from home. That's huge. Now, again, and I, I have not, I, I've looked for this and I've tried to find, and I don't know if either one, even one of you guys did, the scientific numbers on students and COVID. 
young kids, young, you know, children and in, in, in primary school, uh, you know, elementary and the, that type of thing. I can't find a lot of information about that. Has anybody? I, been- I actually do have an article. Um, do we, do we want to transition? Cause this article kind of yeah, goes I was where say we that's are a today. good transition to our final yeah. topic, kind of the reopening of schools and businesses and where we are now. Um, okay. So to go off what John said, this is an article, um, again, from the Wisconsin State Journal, that it was actually from December 5th of 2020, it just um, from recently, because there are still like quite a few schools in Wisconsin and districts that are completely online, even to this Mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Um, It said that the the article was titled, Dr. Fauci sends message to Wisconsin schools. He urged Wisconsin public schools to reopen. Um, he told ABCs this week um, that in-person classes should be the default position and the spread of COVID-19 among children and from children is not really very, is not really a very big deal at all and not like um, one would have suspected. So let's try to get the kids back, he said. So he's saying that the spread from kids is way less than what they would have thought. And he said that he was saying that there's so many more negatives to, you know, keeping these kids online you know academically they're suffering socially yep. they're very socially isolated they're suffering that way yep. and to not to try to you know not kind of you know wreck their development academically and socially they need to be back to school yeah um adding on to that i actually have a cousin who is around 12 or 13 and her um when her school reopened it was all online um then from how she described her program to me, it sounded like a lot of what they did was actually pretty similar to what kind of how college handles its work in that they basically give you a pile of readings to do and some work to go along with it, a due date and say, figure it out on your own time. Well, you know, for college students, well, the responsible ones anyways, that works because in my opinion, I genuinely like to think that we can do that. But, but the problem is my opinion, a problem is when you, at, when you, put that, you know, mindset onto a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old who might not have had the time to develop that same work ethic, time management, and responsibility, I think that could honestly, um, I think that could honestly be a big problem for them academically. It is a big problem for many of these, um, <clears throat> many of these young kids. Um, I've got um, nieces uh, down in Madison, um, and well, nieces and nephews down in Madison school districts, and th- they're totally shut down. Uh, and and you know, it's, they're doing the exactly the same thing. And the, and these kids are really really struggling. Um, uh, <clears throat> one of my co- or one of my nieces was a um, a A level student. I mean, she well, a B, high B's A A level student. She's barely making it right now because she needs that social interaction, that interaction with the teachers that to, to go up and ask these questions. Uh, you know, <clears throat> many people, they, they don't have the, you know, um, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call it, but the uh, comfort level to, to talk on a, in, in a situation like this, um, you know, so they don't ask the questions that they need to ask. Um, and, and, you know, the questions that are going through their mind. They also really <clears throat> need, like I said, that social interaction with other students, other, other people their age. Um, it, you know, it, it's similar to what you guys are experiencing um, there. I, I shouldn't say similar, but at least you are able to walk down the hall and, of, of your, your dorms and your apartment buildings and be in an area where you're actually having that interaction with other people, mostly of them your age. So it's, it's you at least are getting some of that social interaction. But when you lock a kid up at home, um, you know, for nine months of summer, I, you know, they can't help that three months is usually too long for them. You know, they, they get to a point where they get um, so, uh, energetic that they can't handle it i i I don't know if energetic is the right word no it's not the right world at all maybe it's lethargic you know what i mean they just like okay you know i don't know what to do so i'm just not going to do anything and that really really impacts these students and like i said my niece is really is one of those that's dramatically struggling because of it um she was you know she is a junior this year she was well on her way to getting some scholarships and now those are all gone because this year has really you know they they just don't know how to handle it so 
last thing here I want to add is we, um, cause I like to try to bring things back to like the timeline. So on, as we know, you know, this uh, safer at home going, taking it back to the business side of things, the safer at home order was issued on March 23rd by governor Evers, but the Wisconsin Supreme court, um, striked it down and ruled it unconstitutional on May 13th of 2020. And Evers said at the end of May, he was going to not renew it anyway. So that's kind of when businesses started to reopen, you know, people had to wear masks, um, and social distance and everything. And that's, I mean, things in my opinion really haven't changed business wise since then, like everything that you, that it is reopened, but obviously not at full capacity. Right. I mean, some restaurants follow that, um, better than others. Um, I don't know if anyone else. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, Ben. Sorry. Go ahead. If you go ahead. Oh, I'm done. If anyone else. Okay. I, I, I actually did find an article, uh, actually a very interesting article from the, um, uh, journal Sentinel, <clears throat> online, uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court returns a stay-at-home order on uh, May 13th. Um, now, what was interesting about this article <clears throat> is that it went down and it broke down uh, several different, uh, um, it, it gave 19 different uh, quotes from different, from restaurant people, from uh, po politicians, from uh, Governor Evers, from uh, you know, Republicans from, uh, like I said, business owners and how they all plan on, um, uh, on, on doing this. One of the things that I actually did find very, very interesting about this article, again, it was from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, is that it is based strictly, totally, everything is from, um, other than uh, the uh, Senator Teston from uh, Stevens Point, everything else is Southern Wisconsin. Now, I... I really, you know, I, I, I speak to business owners up here and many of them, <clears throat> they were very excited when this came out that we could open. However, they all wanted to do it safely and do it, um, you know, some did open, some didn't. I think what that allowed and gave was, was, was positive about this, uh, the, the Supreme Court saying that Governor Evers could not mandate this or um, not mandate, but make this a law and basically shut everything down. What's that? Enforce it. Enforce it. Yeah, th he was not able to enforce it because, you know, it's, it's, it's against the Constitution. Now, got the state constitution so that the to to basically tell a business what you can and cannot do to a certain level to that level um it gave a lot of people the opportunity to say hey i need to pay for my food i need to provide for my family i'm going to do whatever i can do some people went full bore and said screw it bars open you know come and drink and you know do whatever be many of them are like that but there are a lot of them out there who said okay what can i do to still provide for my family, but do it safely. And that I think is, a, is was a very, very good thing. I, you're right, Evers did say that he was not gonna reinforce it. I'm not going to redo it at the end of May. Um, and uh, I'm, I, I don't know what is, you know, the future is gonna hold. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna, I've heard rumors that there's a possibility he may try to do something again. Um, and uh, I don't know if he's, if it's capable, I don't, my biggest concern with this entire thing is the our our rights. I I don't have a problem wearing a mask. Okay, not one problem at all. However, there are a lot of people out there who believe that I, 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 you're not going to tell me to do this. Okay, do you, do you, understand, you see what I'm saying? You, you're not going to tell me to do it. But you know, I, like me, I, initially it's like no, I don't want to wear one. You know, I don't want to wear one. I, I did, but I, I still gripe about it, still complain about it. I think a lot of us do, you know, I, I think a lot of people do, you know, it's like this freaking thing is ugly, you know what I mean? Or it stinks, you know, that kind of thing. But I think many of us look at this and say, um, I don't want to be told I have to do this. I'm okay doing it, but I don't want to be told I have to do it. That is going to be an issue in January. We've, there's rumors that a possible nationwide mandate is going to be out there. So curious to see how that's going to go. Very curious. Definitely. Yes. So with yeah. that, um, I think it's about time to wrap things up. So we've seen 
kind of how the coronavirus has evolved from kind of a faraway problem that 